Hi guys, as I was away last week and I didn't get a chance to actually run you through how to attach um, an external spreadsheet to our database as an external data source, I'm going to go through it now on this video. Okay, firstly as you can see I've got a spreadsheet here, it has some data in it and this data actually refers to the items that we already have in our database in the items table. Okay, we can see that the items have the same names and the same IDs for each item, but different prices. So this data here is the data which is going to be used to update the current prices in our items table. This is a two-part process. Firstly, we need to attach this spreadsheet as an external data source, and then we'll create a query, and a specific type of query, an update query, to take this data match the ID numbers and then when the ID numbers are the same change the data corresponding with that item. So here we go firstly I'm going to close this data source so we can actually get access to it and go to external data new data source from file in Excel. Be careful when doing this this panel here as you can see underneath it says export this is about exporting data into different um, types of file type. Over here is import and link. This is the side you use to create a linked table. So back to new data source from file and Excel. Now you use this panel last year when you were importing data into a new table in the current database. This year we're going to be using the link to uh, link to the data source by creating a linked table. I'm going to find my file which was stock prices create link the data by creating a link table and then OK this is a very useful um, box to actually look at we can see that the data is the same but the prices are different so this is definitely what we're going to be using to update that and please make sure that if there are column headings on your spreadsheet that you tick the bottle that the box to say that it has items otherwise it will try and use this as data rather than column headings very important process is to name this table it's actually going to appear over here in the tables but as a link table so we're going to give it a proper name and this tables name is um, updated prices so this is our updated prices table and yes we do want to link that table so now you can see updated prices is here and if we open it up it looks like any normal access table as it's four columns and its content looks very much like that actually doesn't it just with different column headings or field headings there we go so that's the items table and this is the prices which we're going to use to update there we go so we can actually close these two now Yes, we do want to save changes. Okay, so we've got our external data linked. Now we're actually going to create straight away the query that's going to do the job that we want to do. In our query panel, so we're going to use um, query design. So don't use the wizard. It's so much better to actually think your way through this rather than getting access to do a lot for you. Um, you know what you want. Access doesn't always know what you want. So we're in query design. We're going to add both of our tables. That's our items table with our current data and our updated price table. And then close. Looks up here so we can see what's going on. So down here, we need the parts of the database that are going to be used or actually going to be updated. Now, we could probably get rid of name because we don't need that. So these are the two relevant columns from our current items table. We've got the ID column and we've got the prices column. These are the two relevant ones because the prices column um, or field is the bit that's going to be changed and the IDs is the bit that's going to be used to make sure the changes are on the right item. We're still in a select query, a query that you've done before. But as you can see up here, we've got a range of query types. We're going to change to an update query and you'll see a new row add 
here, which is update two. So now this lets us select something that we have up here um, to change this. So we're looking at our current price in our items table and we actually want to update that to the price in the updated prices. So we're going to start with our square brackets because it pre-exists in the database. Start typing the name of the table first. And as you'll see, the only thing that relates to that in our database is updated prices. And then our period, our full stop. And then it will give us all of the items here. And we have price. So now we can see that our current price is going to become the updated prices over here. The next thing we look at is the criteria. What are we going to base these changes on? And because our IDs are the same in both tables, we're going to be looking for this ID to match this ID. So all we need to do is, again, start typing the name of our table, our new one, and put the period, the full stop, and the ID. So now when we look at our query and we understand what it means it's saying where the item ID in this table equals the updated price ID in this table we're going to change the price from what it was originally to our new price and that's what this says here this is a um, uh, before I go there we can click run and we'll see that this says that this is going to make these changes and you cannot just control Z or undo up here and this be changed back. It's a once and once only. Um, we know that the prices in our spreadsheet were different from the prices in our database table. So we'll be able to check later that that change has happened. So we want to run the query anyway. And as expected, it's going to say it's going to update our six rows. So our six items in our table and we'll click yes and then it's happened all we need to do now is just click the cross and say do we want to save this query yes because this is going to be a query that can be used over and over and over again whenever these prices are updated and the new spreadsheet is attached here or it's actually the one that's actually located in my folder gets replaced with a new version then we can run this query again and it'll do the, exactly the same process. We won't have to remake this query every time we want to do it. In one of our forms, we'll have a button that runs the query and it will happen automatically. So we're going to save this query as up date prices query. And there we go. As you can see, this query now is an update query this is what this symbol means here and it's got the name that we just called it so let's just have a quick look at our prices here and I'll just pop in and get the stock prices spreadsheet so we can see that when we first compared the data in the spreadsheet and the data in the database they were different but having run our query you can see now these prices have actually been changed to each of the pre-existing plants that we had so that's a success so now I'm going to close this down and close that down and that's that job done see it doesn't take very long very simple very quick process as long as you know what you're doing and, and what you expect to be happening so I'm going to pause now and then come back in a few moments and we'll do uh, the append query where we're adding new data to our pre-existing table by attaching another spreadsheet as an external data source and creating a different type of query, an append query, which will put that data into here. It's slightly different, so hang around and see how that's done.